Hello dear children welcome back I'm Dr Jisha Jo in this session we shall study some common defects of the eye now let us move on to the first defect which we have to study that is myopia myopia is otherwise called as short sightedness or near sightedness in this condition a person having myopia is able to see nearby objects clearly but distant objects appear blurred okay that is why it is called as short sightedness or near sightedness near sightedness is a it's otherwise called as short sightedness person having myopia is able to see nearby objects clearly but uh, distant objects appear blurred what is actually happening here is the uh, light rays from the distant object is falling in front of the uh, retina that is the image of the object is falling uh in front of the retina actually the image has to uh, be focused on the retina but in this condition a person with myopia as uh, we have uh, seen the light rays coming from the distant object converges and falls in front of the retina this may be due to two reasons the first reason is that the uh, lengthening of the eyeball from front to back the eyeball has lengthened from front to back that might be the first reason or the lens might have become too convex so if the lens has become too convex or too rounded again the same thing ha can happen or it might be that is it might be due to any one of these reasons or may be due to both these reasons okay so here in uh, myopia the light rays coming from the distant objects forms the image in front of the retina and this is due to two reasons the lengthening of the eyeball from front to back and second reason the lens becoming too convex how can this defect be corrected this defect can be corrected by using a concave lens okay how can it be corrected by using a concave lens this uh, is normally asked as a diagram based question for a exam here you will be given this diagram you will be asked to identify the defect so look at the diagram carefully light rays are coming from a distant object that is why the uh, rays are parallel so uh, it is from a distant object and the image is falling in front of the retina so confirm it is myopia and what are the two reasons the two first reason is that the eyeball is uh, lengthened from front to back and second reason is the uh, lens has become too convex how can it be corrected how can it be corrected by using a concave lens draw a diagram as uh, after uh, using the lens that you have uh, uh, mentioned in the previous question draw the diagram okay so that is the next part of that question so how will you draw the diagram so that is i am just uh, redrawing in this figure itself so here we will have we are correcting this defect isn't it okay the light rays are coming from the distant object so we are using a concave lens there that is a concave lens okay once uh, the rays pass through the concave lens it diverges isn't it, it diverges a little bit it diverges a little bit and then it falls on the lens see so there is divergence taking place as uh, the rays pass through the uh, concave lens then 
so that is the pupil that is the iris there the light rays passes through the pupil into the lens falls on the lens and once it passes through the lens what happens the rays converge and the image is formed on the retina on the retina so this is the diagram that you have to draw so identify the defect and how can it be rectified you have to draw this diagram so draw a concave lens there and remember to uh, put three sets of arrows one in front of the concave uh, lens second in between the concave lens and the lens of our eye and the third inside or uh, behind the lens so three sets of arrows should be put for the uh, when you draw the rays and uh, so as a result uh, the image uh, will be focused on the retina so first uh, we are using how can it be rectified by using a concave lens once the light rays pass through the concave lens uh, the divergence of the uh, rays take place the light rays diverge and then these diverged rays fall on the convex lens of our eye and as a result after when it passes through our lens in the eye it again converges and it is able to fall on the retina okay so this is myopia or nearsightedness we shall move on to the second defect which is called as hyperopia or hypermetropia or it is otherwise called as far sightedness or long sightedness okay so here this is a condition in which the distant objects are clear whereas uh, uh, nearby objects uh, become blurred or it is difficult to see nearby objects clearly but distant objects are clear okay so if you look in this diagram you can see the light rays are coming from a nearby object that is why the light rays are like this otherwise if it is coming from a distant object we draw it as parallel lines okay so here the light rays are coming from a nearby object and uh, where is the image being formed image is being formed behind the retina actually it has to fall here to get a good vision or a clear vision but here in this case the image is falling behind the retina so far sightedness is a condition in which the person is able to see distant objects clearly but uh, nearby objects become blurred okay or he feels uh, finds difficulty in seeing nearby objects clearly so here what is actually happening is that the image of the object is falling behind the retina this may be due to two reasons the first reason is that the eyeball is shortened from front to back the shortening of the eyeball from front to back and the second reason is that the lens has become uh, too flat or less convex the lens has become too flat or less convex so these are the two reasons okay so this is hyperopia and uh, what are the two reasons the first reason is that the eyeball is shortened from front to back and second reason is the lens lens has become too flat or less convex now how can it be corrected this defect can be corrected by using a convex lens okay so that is what we are going again as i told you in the previous uh, diagram uh, this also can be asked as a diagram based question so i am drawing it so here the light rays are coming from a nearby object a convex lens is placed there so naturally convergence will take place isn't it okay you have to draw a set of arrow here another set of arrow should be drawn here okay so that is the iris that is the lens now when it passes through the lens again convergence of the light rays will take place and they will fall on the 
retina. Okay, so that is the third set of arrow which you have to draw. So as the light rays uh, coming from the nearby object passes through the convex lens, uh, it converges and falls on the uh, lens of our eye. As the light rays pass through the lens, again convergence of the light rays will take place and as a result, uh, the image will be focused on the or image will be formed on the retina. So this is hyperopia or far sightedness again this can be asked as a diagram based question the first diagram will be given and you will uh, be asked to identify the defect so look at the light rays if it is coming from a nearby object and if the image is forming behind the retina confirm that it is hyperopia or hy hypermetropia and you will be asked to redraw uh, the uh, diagram when uh, uh, lens is used. How will you rectify it? Redraw, redraw the diagram after rectifying the defect. So whenever you draw, when such a question comes, remember to draw three sets of arrows. One, two and three. Three sets of arrows should be there in your diagram. Okay, so uh, that is with regard to hyperopia or hypermetropia. Now coming on to the third defect that is astigmatism. Here this is a condition in which uh, some parts of the object, when we are looking on to an object, some parts of the object uh, are clear while some other parts appear blurred. Okay, for an object to be in sharp focus, the entire object should be clear to us, is it, isn't it? But here in a person suffering from astigmatism, some parts of the object may be blurred while some other parts are clear. Okay, and this is due to the uneven curvature of the uh, cornea. Okay, so the cornea, the uneven curvature of the cornea results in astigmatism and how can it be rectified by using cylindrical lens. So what is the defect? It is a condition in which some parts of the object appear blurred while some other parts are clear. Okay, what is the cause of the defect? It is due to uneven curvature of the cornea. We know what is cornea, the sclera which becomes transparent in front that is the cornea when cornea becomes uneven the uneven curvature of the cornea results in astigmatism and it can be corrected using cylindrical lens next condition is presbyopia presbyopia is far sightedness in old aged people that is far sighted mean, uh, sightedness means those such a person can see distant objects clearly but nearby vision is affected isn't it so far sightedness occurring in uh, old aged persons uh, is called as presbyopia how is far sightedness corrected by using by using convex lens so here also this is corrected by using convex lens and the cause of this defect is the loss of flexibility of the lens the lens loses its flexibility as the person grows old that is the cause of presbyopia okay so what is presbyopia far-sightedness occurring in old age people is uh, presbyopia what is the cause of the defect it is due to the loss of flexibility of the lens and how can it be corrected or rectified by the use of convex lens now moving on to the next defect that is cataract what is cataract cataract is a condition in which the lens becomes opaque and if not treated at the right time it will lead to complete blindness because uh, the lens is becoming opaque and as a result it will lead to complete blindness if not treated at the proper time and the treatment for this is uh, surgery surgically treated we have to remove the affected lens and use a highly convex spectacle 
highly convex spectacles are used remove our lens opaque lens and uh, implant a new plastic lens in place of the removed lens we are implanting a plastic lens and also by the use of highly convex uh, spectacles we can uh, rectify this uh, defect that is the cataract Next defect is night blindness as the term indicates it is a condition in which a person cannot see clearly in dim light okay the person cannot see in dim light what is the sensory cells that are responsible for vision in dim light do you remember they are the rod cells and the pigment produced are, uh, is the rhodopsin pigment in such a person rhodopsin pigment is not formed and as a result rod cells are not able to function properly okay so that is the cause of this uh, defect night blindness is a condition in which a person is not able to see in dim light and this is due to the non formation of the rhodopsin pigment as a result the rod cells are not able to function properly and how can be this be corrected or rectified this is due to uh, the deficiency of vitamin a so have a lot of vitamin a rich foods by having a lot of uh, foods rich in vitamin a we can uh, rectify this defect to uh, some extent so that is night blindness okay so uh, for the synthesis of rhodopsin vitamin a is necessary so how can this defect be rectified or corrected by having a lot of foods uh, which are rich in vitamin a moving on to the next defect that is color blindness as the term indicates it is a condition in which a person is uh, not able to differentiate between colors especially red and green okay it is a condition in which uh, a person cannot discriminate between the red and green color so uh, as we have seen it is a genetic defect it is due to a recessive gene that is located on the x chromosome and the inheritance of color blindness follows uh, which pattern do you remember the pattern of inheritance of x linked uh, genes it follows the criss cross inheritance that is uh, the genes are passed on from the mother to the son or father to the daughter so that is a genetic defect it is due to recessive genes that are located on the x chromosomes and follows criss cross pattern of inheritance so it is uh, the condition in which a person cannot discriminate between red and green colors last defect that we have to study that is squint eye what is squint eye this is a condition in which the two eyes may either diverge or it may the two eyes may con somewhat converge when the two eyes diverge then that is uh, called as wide eye and when they converge that condition is called as cross eye okay you might have uh, seen persons in with uh, in which the two eyes may be seen uh, diverging such a condition is wide eye and when the two eyes somewhat converge then it is called as cross eye and uh, the treatment for this is uh, only uh, surgery surgical treatment and by there are uh, certain exercises for it for the correction of squint eye so surgical treatment and suitable exercises can help in the correction of this defect that is squint eye so my dear children i hope the session is clear we have discussed about some common defects of the eye in the session whatever we have studied in this session i hope it is clear to you if you have any doubts or suggestions please ask your doubts and give your suggestions in the comment section thank you